Well, hello there, humans of these other things. How you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bushcom. Today's video is Heavy Tanking Masterclass. I've got three different games. I've got Ginger Ninja, uh, or Ninja Ginger, Sami, and my good friend, Mr. Ouija, one of my longtime platoon mates. I've been playing tanks with on and off for, I don't know, eight, nine years, whatever, the, however long the game's been out. Um, this is a really interesting session because I did a big heavy tanking video and I want to get into the nitty gritty of good heavy tank driving. Watch this. Look at the overextension by all these red heavies. Now, I love what the ninja does here. Um, the 95 does a very good job. He extends all the way past his cover, but these red heavies make a, a massive error. And this is something you've got to take out of your, your heavy gameplay. And that's where early on, they call it bleeding. Okay, And you'll see in the tournaments where someone gets bleeds too much and it becomes what a shot that was it becomes obvious that they're going to get cleared look at where the heavy tanks are for the green team here and look where the heavy tanks are for the red team now this is going to get a lot closer than it probably should but for all that this early overextension where you get stuck angling to more than one target at a time especially in a tank like the vk the vk i just did a video on and look how Ginger turns around here. The gun's still pointing in that direction, but he's got the tank aiming to the other side. So he's not just rotating the turret and spinning turrets to look behind him and such. He's actually setting up for the next angle. And he's completely aware of what the tank is. That's why he's got the HE, just in case he gets a PTA shot that he can actually take HE with. And you note how he's never moved out wide here. That's because the only cover he's got, and look how carefully he's about this cover, is that ridge line that he went to right at the start. This is an interesting game because it just goes to show how if you keep your position and you keep your hold, you can actually do a lot of farming as a heavy tank. And this is what we're talking about. Lovely work, 750 max roll on a HE shot. Look at how little damage our buddy has taken here. And... He's just put 1250 into the back of that STB. I love this kind of heavy tank driving because it's like you get rewarded for playing right. And it doesn't always work that way. And I understand if you're watching this stuff and you're like, these teams, I don't get these teams. Everyone gets shit teams, guys. Like I said this before when I did the, the heavy tank masterclass, the heavy tank basics video last week. Uh, you're going to win 40% of the games that you can't lose, right? And 40% of the games, you can't win. And then the 20% in between, that's kind of what decides how you get to 60% and beyond. The way you play in those games where you can be a deciding factor is what we're talking about here. And you're gonna see, this is a game where our hero, the Ginger Ninja, has actually played very, very well positionally. Um, one of the joys of being in a spot like this is that if you have to drive forward, you can get to cover on either side very, very quickly. Is it 7,000 damage? Like, 7,000 damage, and all he's done is go the heavy route and be sensible. WZ cover, like, yes, mate, he's, he's covering. He's covering pretty freaking well. He's at 7.5K. It seems like a really good bit of cover. <laughs> I don't know what you think, but I think it's good cover. Go, dude, he says. Mate, he hasn't stopped pressing the fire button. And this is really about the masterclass of the heavy. You don't overextend. And you put yourself in a position where you can put shots out without taking damage back like that. And you can see just how effective you can be. And I really love that style of gameplay because that's a flat tank. The WZ111 has bugger all gun depression. It's a flat tank. It loves the flat, right? And you saw that early positioning. So take one thing away from that game. Don't overextend at the start, but put yourself in a spot where you can easily move in and out of cover to get shots. This is a much more classical game in the Yo. Um, this is a bit controversial here. I don't really like going the center of this map in a heavy because it relies on other members of your team then going somewhere else and being heavy tanks and holding a line. But if you look at the the division of labor here, this is actually a really good spot to be in uh, for Sami. 
because there's not a lot of heavy tanks in the game. There's only two heavy tanks, and their 57 heavy has gone in an even crazier spot, right into the middle of the B cap, which is just absolutely bonkers. And he's ammo wrecked him, so that is how you love to start. The thing that I do like about this game is mobility. If you're in a heavy tank and you look at the map and you can see opportunities to be involved, then you've got to take them. And a lot of what I did in the IS-4 video was about holding lines and then moving forward carefully and and contritely and, and getting the job done. Sami's got an ammo rack in the middle and would be very, very tempted to just sit there and farm damage. But he's seen the team moving and he's seen an opportunity to move and he's actually left, immediately left. Hasn't mucked around. He's got his ammo rack and he's gone. He's seen a push on and all the shots that he put in uh, from the back end there were shots that wouldn't have been available for him if he had a stayed middle. So the message you're taking around here is, oh my God, seriously, are you kidding? Is mobility. You've got to be mobile. Like you really do have to be aware. And if you want to be a, a guy that not just holds a line, but can spot when to exploit a line in a heavy tank, then you're going to have to pay a lot more attention to the minimap. And you're going to have to pay a lot more attention to what kind of tanks you've got on your team and what kind of tank you're playing. If you're a clipper like this, where you've got two big, what is that drill thinking? I mean, you've got to put the gun in the game because realistically, this is perfect matchmaking. Absolutely perfect matchmaking. You've got tier nine tanks in a tier 10 game. You can't be waiting or you'll just end up doing a 2K win. And we're now at five and a half K here for Sami. Like these are big number games. And they're big number games where he's using his hit point pool really, really well. He's bled a lot there. But look, he's done it when the game's just about over. And he's done it in their spawn. This isn't a case of a heavy tank like we saw in the last game where Ginger was able to sit in the one spot and farm. This is about using the tank's mobility and getting out there. Even when you're not the fastest tank on the map, if you watch the flanks fold, you can get in behind them and you can be really, really successful. All right, so I've talked about not overextending, moving when it's necessary and moving with the team. Now let's talk about the carry. And I've got my good friend, Mr. Ouija here. He's going to be running the VK9001P and he's going to show us the carry. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty cool tank. I've played this tank a mite on the EU server, but I've played it a couple of times on Asia and it's always been very strong for me. It doesn't have the alpha damage of some of the other big VKs like the... Uh, VK7201 or indeed the E100 uh, and and the like. But it does have the E75s really, really tough to angle, uh, tough to pen sides and very, you know, very good upper and lower glaces. Now, this is not what you would call a traditional heavy tank spot, but he's playing it in an active role. He's not sitting there behind the tree waiting for people to come out. He's actually spotting with his body so to speak and so if anyone tries to push around he does have his inside line covered for his teammate which is very very important he is supporting that type 71 and stopping anyone from getting around to his flank but unfortunately uh there is another type 71 from the team here this happens a lot on my own ruins where things get a little bit disjointed and out you saw the is7 went all the way around and didn't actually cap anything which is probably why the 71 was confused and found him here. And what I love about what Weege is doing is he's driving with controlled aggression. It might look like he's just sat there and done nothing, but he has actually rolled through, spotted some targets, put some shots in, and he's not being passive. He's now going to decide, can the IS-7 take that target out, or am I going to have to go and help? Uh, and... I agree. I would have gone and helped as well. You can never be sure. The next big decision is, can the team hold down the bottom long enough for me to cap? Or do we push right through? And Ouija in... And I, I really do think this is the right decision as well. You've already got one cap. So you've got a cap advantage. 
Two caps might swing it, but by the time you get out of that cap, the rest of the team might be dead. So here we go, back into the heavy tanking carry. One of the important things that we talked about in the IS-4 heavy tanking video was conserving your hit point pool. We just done really well with that. He has taken some frontal uh, engagements, most notably with that Type 71. But through all of it, he never really changed his angles to give him side shots. Even here, you can see how hard he's hugging and moving hard cover to hard cover and just breaking down the angles. Always giving this Type uh, T57 Heavy really difficult shots to take back. Hard to hard to get around a corner like that without taking shots. And the Heavy does have an awful lot of heat pen. But if you can see the minimap, there is now only two of the good guys left and three of the bad guys left. So in this situation, when you're in a carry situation, what you want to be looking at is clearing a, a gun. You can't... The, the thing that generally kills you in these last moments is not the one-on-one -on -one engagement that you can win or lose. It's the engagement where you have multiple targets and they'll just be very passive until someone gets an angle on you and then they'll just take you to town. So what we're just doing here is the right thing. He's expending some of the hit point pool that he's actually saved to clear a target. And that's what he does. So we've talked about getting in a position where you are not overextended, but you can put shots in and get in and out of cover very, very quickly with good cover. We've talked about knowing when to rotate as a heavy, watching for the rest of the team. And now we're gonna talk about some of the skills you need to actually carry. And using all of that hit point pool was really massive. Where did that go? Like, seriously? Uh, because he needed it to just trade out that 57. Now, what he wants to be doing is face hugging. He really does. And he's waiting for this 60 TP. He knows he can't get stuck in a situation where there's two and he's got to take a risk here. Risk comes up and he gets another bounce. 380, you know, that was the big stuff. Uh, and now he's got to get in a face hug with this 60 TP. Beautiful work there. Beautiful work. And now it's hatches. Now, part of face hugging, and one of the most difficult things to do, is you want to do it on a tank that can't really hit your hatches. And when you're further up the hill, and the enemy is further down the hill, that increases the angle. So where Ouija is here, is really driving this poor old 60 TP nuts. Knowing the reload of the other tank is also important because you know that if it's a 60 TP, then it's got a huge long reload, okay? So what you can do is just move the gun around in front until that tank is fired and then you go and get your free shot on the hatch or on the... Oh, he's desperate now. That's the end of it. Really nice job there by Ouija. Um, I thought that was a great carry by him. 6,000 uh, damage. Good job by the IS-7 down the bottom holding for as long as he did. So, uh, as I had the chance to do that. But 6.5k, 5k blocked is a lot of bananas. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Looking at the darker side of heavy tanking. The skills you need to start moving from the standard up on above. Um, if you like more of, the, more of these videos, send me uh, some comments below and I'll do some more. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.